The third piece we're focusing on today is Le Fleurs en Dahomey by Marcel Landowski. It translates as The Sleeping Flowers. Landowski was born in 1915 and he died in 1999. He also studied at the Paris Conservatory. And his grandfather, Henri Vuitton, is actually a recognized composer and violinist himself. So you may not have known about that connection between Landowski and Vuitton. Landowski is very interesting. He actually held a dual career. Not only was he a composer, he also was a high-ranking officer in France's Ministry of Culture starting in 1960. So he was the Inspector General of Music Education and later head of the National Department of Music in 1964 and 1970, respectively. He influenced changes in areas such as opera reform and by establishing musical groups and events. He earned the commendation of being one of the central figures in French musical life during the last three decades of the 20th century. And it's rather interesting that he died 1999, right at the turn of the century. Okay, so we're gonna move on to a discussion of the piece, just a brief overview to share with you. It is an impressionistic style piece with a beautiful flowing legato melody. The opening measures present these full upper register triads in both hands, brings to mind that lush tone of Debussy. And there's also colorful sonorities portraying the impression of sluggishness or tiredness often associated with sleeping. So the sleeping flowers is the title once again. And this kind of colorful sonority, he brings us in mostly by the use of some very well-placed accidentals. We'll talk about that a little later. This form is a succinct ABA form. You can see I've written it out for us here. The first nine measures is the A section, followed by B measures 10 through 15, and then a return to A prime measure 16 through 24. And lastly, this piece has a large dynamic range from forte to pianissimo. So that's kind of a fun uh, point to make as you explore this piece with your student. We're going to pause and play the piece here. I'm going to briefly mention um, that articulation and fingering is so important in this piece, as you just heard. And actually, there's so many points that I just love to spend all day discussing with these five pieces, but I'm just trying to narrow down um, each of the pedagogical focuses to just kind of one main point. But I do, did want to mention the articulation and fingering. You've got to have these beautiful legato phrasings. It's important in every measure. You need that technique of legato fingering and um, the B section in measures 10 through 12 especially offers an interesting study in articulation. You have the left hand marked, as you see on the screen, with legato, mezzo piano, and then legato for the right hand marked mezzo forte and then later moving on up to the forte. So you have two different articulations being performed simultaneously there. And the fingering, the first problem really 
that initial measure you see connecting three legato triads is required in both hands with the melody in the right hand, that upper right hand voice. So being able to talk about that and work on the voicing issues um, is going to be a big point about this piece. A similar voicing issue is found in the repeated chords in measures four through five. This one's also shown in the musical example below. And uh, so that is just one more example of where you're going to need those beautiful legato phrasings. My main focus for the pedagogical discussion is pedaling. We haven't had a piece yet uh, that focused on pedaling or even needed pedaling, but there's no pedal markings in Landowski's score, but the damper pedal is certainly needed at times to best capture the sound of this impressionistic piece, even with legato fingering. As legato slurs are the primary articulation, the use of the syncopated pedal is the best choice because it ensures the seamless flow of notes and triads is sustained. So option one that you could discuss with your student is pedaling with the harmonic rhythm. So you can see this below at example 3-5 letter A. So the pedaling here would then follow the chord changes. The syncopated pedaling was our basic play, then pedal, play, then pedal technique. The pedal could be held through the half note on the last half of the measure while the left hand plays the staccato fourth beat. So this is what I'm showing you here on the screen. So these are the options. So this is option A that I'm just discussed. And then option two would be you could try pedaling twice the measure. This is located at option B on the musical example there. Same excerpt, just looking for letter B. So you could pedal twice a measure at the half note rhythm, and this creates more of a synthesis of the two triads on beats one and two that results in this lovely shimmer of sound. More impressionistic, basically. Um, so I will demonstrate this here with an audio clip if you can listen along with me. Connecting these first two triads definitely opens up a higher plane of sonority and that more closely fits the impressionistic style. I think it's more appreciated um, and as your student gets more comfortable with the style, I think they'll begin to appreciate it as well. The first half of measure three, so we'll move on to the next musical example, continues this idea of synthesis. So we're juxtaposing half steps and whole steps here. And you notice in the left hand, I'm looking at a horizontal group of notes, and then we'll talk about linear. So, uh, or vert yeah, horizontal versus vertical. So in the left hand, we have this cluster at the very beginning of the measure, B and C. I'm looking at the half notes here on the bottom, really close together. And so that would be a half step there, B to C. The upstem notes in the left hand, so the G and then the A moving to the right, the second quarter note there, are that would be the whole step. And then I'm going to direct your attention to the top, the right hand part. So the top upstem notes E down to D there would be our whole step. And then if you look back at the first beat and looking at it vertically, you see consonant intervals of a third and a fourth. So you have the right hand obviously B up to E played together. So that's an interval of a fourth. And then in the left hand, you have two sets of thirds, C to E and E to G, all this played on that downbeat here. So again, just noticing these, the synthesis of these notes all blending together, half steps along with whole steps at the same time. Okay, so other examples of harmonic pedaling could be found in measures 4 and 19, and this is the example 3-7 on your screen. Here, the right hand's rhythmic structure and the use of the triadic pitch collections are similar to measures 1 and 2. You can see that right off. Even though the left hand is more active, the use of syncopated pedaling on the first, second, and third beats allows the accompanimental eighth notes to blend in nicely with the right hand in measure 19. And I'll play an excerpt for you here. The student may find it interesting to notice how measure seven's rhythm is actually a mirror image of measures one through two, four and 19. So therefore, with that mirror image, you could actually say the pedal is backwards with a half note being the first part of the measure instead of the second part of the measure. So I like to find little interesting tidbits. So you can see those three measures together, the measure in the middle is the rhythm backwards where you would pedal the half note 
two beats there and then change with beat three, beat four, whereas the examples on the outer, the first and the third example, has a half note at the last part of those measures. Now, when we talk about pedal, the other discussion is, should we use a full pedal here, a full depression of the pedal? Should we have a shallow or partial pedal? So while the A section is filled with legato slurs, the pedal must be handled with care so that the musical intentions of the composer are not clouded. Isn't that a sermon we preach all the time to our students? <laughs> use the pedal carefully. The use of partial or shallow pedals is important here. Um, a full depression of the damper pedal in sections with that active left hand, those eighth notes accompanying accompaniments, get my words out here, such as found in measures four through nine, we showed that earlier, creates balance and texture problems. So you don't want to have just this complete sludge going on with the full depression of the pedal. So using shallow or partial pedals still allows for fullness and connectivity, yet it doesn't cloud the texture. There are a few places in which the full pedal would be a benefit, however. So the initial bars of the A section with its full bodied chords and both hands, you could really gain a richer sonority with the full use of the pedal. And another example would be the final half note tones at the fermata and measure nine and 24. So this is actually the halfway point and then the last measure of the piece. This is shown in example three nine on your screen. So these final half note tones are brought together with the damper pedal, allowing these dissonant E to E flat pitches to blend together. So this is a beautiful example, and I think this is really where you have some tone painting from the composer. This is where the flowers are, are kind of nodding off, falling to sleep there. So I'll play this again using the full pedal, full depression of the pedal. Now, I do want to comment, the damper pedal is not needed at all for the majority of the B section. So this is found in measures 10 through 15, mostly because there's a light staccato accompaniment in the left hand, and it's very energetic. It propels the tempo forward here. So using the pedal would kind of negate that whole action. The right hand then is solely responsible for the legato phrasing, and this is accomplished with the help of strategic fingering and articulation, which is shown in the Bilodeau edition. So I'll share a short clip of that with you. No pedal used here. Now there is a little caveat I do want to add in about the pedal. We've talked about the damper pedal. That's mostly where we focus our attention as piano teachers. But there's actually a couple of cases where you might consider with your student using the una corda pedal. And of course the una corda, this might be the first time your student has used it. It's kind of a special effects uh, for most students. And I think it's a suitable introduction for the intermediate student. And you can shift the hammers, of course, with this pedal to strike only one out of three strings, hence una, one corda, one string, una corda. So this una corda pedal creates this mellowness of sound. And there's a couple of spots in the Fleur Sans de where you could really use this as a helpful tool in creating the extremely soft pianissimo or pianissimo, and this enhances that nodding off effect of those sleeping flowers found in the second half of the measures I just mentioned earlier, measures nine and 24. Now, we always wanna link this discussion to a repertoire reference. So the French modern composer Maurice Ravel comes to mind uh, when I'm looking for a comparable example of this technique and of course a more difficult piece. His sonatine also demonstrates the need for this lovely legato melodic voice accompanied by two lower voices in the right hand. This is the first movement of a sonatine, by the way. This elegant piece is written in sonata form and also has graceful melodies in the right hand. Intentional fingering, yet again, is required to successfully produce that legato line. And I'm showing you here on the screen, example 3-3. Three, three. This is the first ending in the first movement, which leads to a repeat of the exposition. So we can take a listen here. And 
And as we lead to the conclusion of our third piece together, for what students would this piece be appropriate? Landowski provides the teacher with a miniature and the impressionistic style. The beauty of this work lies in its simplicity and brevity. The key signature of E minor is familiar. So students learning that relative minor relationship to the major keys, this would be something they could latch onto and bring into their study. Use of a few additional accidentals that show the composer's tone painting. They are present, but not overly so. The phrases are short and articulation brings variety. While there are many opportunities to address issues such as pedaling, fingering, large dynamic contrast, I didn't get a chance to talk about that in this discussion, but there are large dynamic contrasts. This selection is still well within the grasp of an intermediate student with three to five years of training. So of course, this is dependent on your student's personal needs. So you may have a student that's been studying five or six years, and this is perfectly within their level. So I'm just giving you kind of a large range. This is about the area that you could assign this to a student. 